everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. Hello and thank you again to all of our Patreon subscribers. We really do appreciate you. I hope you've enjoyed some of the insider looks that I've shared on the page uh, of what's going on this week. I'm trying to give everyone their sneak peeks ahead of everyone else and of course all the little bit of insider information, stuff I don't really share here on the channel. Thank you very much. Both Nora and I really do appreciate all of you. All right, with that being said, let's get into the episode. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do today is fix a mistake that I made in the previous episode. The cradles that the lifeboats sit on, I folded the wrong way. I don't even really know why or what sent me down that road. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it, but the important thing is we go ahead and correct that error. I'll show you that right away and how I fixed it. Then we're gonna go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this section, which is the 25 foot cutter lifeboats and all the little detail that goes around them. So specifically the sounding bar and the sounding machine. Details that you don't really need to add, but they were there and it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, then we'll go ahead and assemble our 25 foot cutter lifeboat, throw the oars in it, hang it on the side of the ship and get it all rigged up and installed. That will conclude all of the lifeboats for Titanic. That is a big, big deal because I have this little list of things that are left and it's really only a few major items. The thing is, each of those major items involves a ton of time and a lot of steps, and the lifeboats was one of them. I'm hoping that things kind of move along a little faster now at this point. We're getting close to wrapping this build up. All right, uh, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into the build. Okay, as mentioned in the intro, still working on uh, the lifeboats here, but I had a problem with the stands. I, I, I put them in incorrectly. So you can see a lot of the slack's been removed now uh, from the, the rigging holding the ship down. These are now, the cradles are now shaped uh, the right way. Someone made a comment in the last video saying, hey, um, these are in wrong, but they, they didn't say it that way. They said something like, uh, they didn't come out and just say, hey, you and put those in wrong you folded them the wrong way they said something like yeah the reason you have so much slack up here is the way the uh, stanchions or the cradles are are set they implied that like the mistake wasn't mine that the mistake was in uh, the kit now the instructions for some reason they do show them this way sort of uh, k's instructions aren't super clear on this. I don't know why I did this wrong. I know that I've seen it the other way like I did in the previous video. So anyway, you gotta fix all this. So here is an example. They're all bent the correct direction um, and I've got my little plastic piece on the back side just like I showed in the previous video. Uh, so yeah, just not a big deal. You just go ahead and pop them all off. Um, rebend them, put them back in the place for what we're working on now. But it occurred to me that somebody might say, Ben, you, you folded these and you super glued them together. How did you take them apart? Let's talk about that. Okay, so here we have just a scrap piece, piece of photo etch that I have bent in half. Hopefully you can make that out. And I super glued it. Now you can use uh, like Bob Smith Industries Uncure chemical you just dump it on there a bunch of times and it'll eat away at the CA glue and it'll release it but there's a much faster way if you're using brass and you've used super glue cyanoacrylate cyanoacrylate is acrylic once it sets up it's acrylic and acrylic is is just a plastic and this is metal so if you have this scenario all you need to do is grab a lighter and heat it up and burn off the glue and let me I'm gonna move the microphone see if I can do this so you can hear everything okay that just got hot scorched there hopefully you heard that sound but now it opens right up it's also annealed now so if you didn't want it annealed uh, you're, you're kind of out of luck there but uh, yeah that's it that's how you do it so and then you know, it's annealed, and in my scenario, I needed to bend it the other way, right? I needed to stop it, unfold it here, and then fold this end up. So anyway, that's how you unstick this stuff. So pressing on. 
All right, here's one of our 26 uh, foot boats, or sorry, 25 foot boat cutters. It comes from KA. It's 3D printed like this. Very nice. So uh, you're going to have to go ahead and get your little cutters here and remove all of these sprues. And what I do is I start along the top here, like so, reach in, do the best you can, and then you could go ahead and snip all those off. You've just exposed this whole area right here. Uh, so I guess my, my comment here is just with any type of 3D printing and you're removing these sprues, uh, you just need to think about systematically what what's going to cause them to be removed quickly and easily and not damage anything. Um, this is if, especially if you're, you're buying them from a kit. As you can see inside of our KA cutter, it's it, first of all, it's a little translucent, but it is very nicely detailed. Photo etch goes inside of here, but for the sequence of events, it's easy. Best if we remove all this, hit it with some um, metal primer and get it painted first. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this cut out and do that. Okay, so for this section, I forgot to record the audio apparently, but uh, this is our pre-painted piece of photo etch. I, I must have painted it earlier on uh, in the build. But you get to pull it out and then you have these uh, two little side pieces that get installed. The big thing that I want to point out here is you want to make sure that photo etch ends up inboard. The, the outside edge, that white photo etch piece that you see right there, you do not want to go wider than it. It fits exact inside of the lifeboat. And so definitely err to the inside if you can't get it um, exactly perfect. Otherwise, you'll have difficulty getting everything installed. So anyway, we'll go ahead and continue on here. Just a couple drops of CA glue. And we'll get this thing put together. Okay, for this next part right here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and stick these little photo etch brass loops into the holes uh, on either end of the lifeboat. This is what's gonna hold up uh, the boat. And there's a little tab uh, or notch in it to let you know how deep it's gotta go. I just apply a little bit of CA glue to it and drop it into position uh, so that I can get it lined up right and get my depth set. Once that's done, if you wanted to bend over those tabs on the bottom there, you could. Uh, I just go ahead and apply a generous helping of CA glue to the back, and that will hold the whole thing together, as you can see right here. Uh, once this is done and set up, and you, you put as much glue in the back there as you'd like, it's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to see it when you're done. Uh, once this whole thing is set up, though, uh, go ahead and do the other side, and then We'll take this whole thing over uh, to paint and get it all set up and ready to go. Because it's easier to paint the two halves uh, separately. So we'll go ahead and press on with that right now. All right, so got our primer back out and our white. And we're just going to go ahead and get this painted up. Since that photo etch piece drops down into, I think you can see that edge right there, uh, the cutter here, you absolutely are going to want to paint inside of here first. So you could try and do everything at once uh, after it's assembled. I think you're going to run into trouble getting a coat of paint in here that's satisfactory. And you really need to because, like I mentioned before, it's semi-transparent. See that? and you'll have trouble uh, coating everything. Okay, we'll let that set up and dry and then we'll uh, go ahead and flip it over and do the other side and then we'll put this whole thing together. Press it on. All right, once the white's on, uh, you know, this is up to you. You can, you can do this paint later uh, after you do the inside or you can go ahead and put it on right now, but I'm using uh, Rust by Model Master 
because I think that when it dries, it makes a great mahogany. Uh, the book says it's brown. Uh, that's what the Ship Magnificent uh, book says. The color was up here. That's what White Star Line used on all of uh, its lifeboats. But I think just plain old brown is probably unappealing to the eye. Is that the way to say it? Yeah. Unappealing to the eye. We're going to go with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch this up. And then same, you know, before we put the whole thing together, it, they had it along the top here also on the gunnel. Just move right along and paint it right here. Now, I did also read in the book that they made it very clear White Star painted the inside of these boats white, a couple coats of paint, and then they finished it off with a stone color, um, which would imply that it's a slightly, you know, like a gray color. I don't recommend that, given the scale. You're, you're not going to notice the difference. It might come out a little weird. So just go ahead and, and, and paint this up. So we'll finish that up and press on. All right, so now that everything's painted up, uh, you can go ahead and apply a little bit of CA glue to the ridge right here. This is where that photo etch piece is going to end up sitting. And along up here. And a little bit right there. Along there. All right. Because of the shape of things, it helps to kind of insert the PE at either end of the boat first, just to kind of help get it to settle down. And that's it. You end up with a nice looking 25 foot cutter, right? So now the next thing, uh, there's a couple oars that go on the inside and then we'll, excuse me, we'll throw the decals on right here. As per the last video, I'll go ahead and install the ropes per the last video. And then um, that'll be it. The cutter will be ready to go. All right, now we're going to have some fun. These are the photo etch parts for the Kelvin Hughes LTD motorized sanding machine, uh, sounding machine, sorry. Um, so basically this thing was developed in 1907 and it was so accurate they hardly made any changes to it until 1940. Uh, that implies that in the middle of the ocean it would tell you you were sound and didn't have to worry about hitting anything. And then uh, if you'd ran the starboard side one out at the appropriate time in the middle of that faithful night it would read zero feet you aren't sound not good so anyway um you can see some really microscopic parts here i just want to tell you right now if you're having any kinds of trouble at all with this thing fold this in half throw just the bottom in slide these two wheels in put this on top and call it a day uh, messing with these handles getting the center thing to line up is going to be extremely difficult. Also, uh, there's one gotcha on this I'll show you right now. On this main piece right here, see the two, there's two little holes, one here and here. On the instructions, they'll show you that's where you slide the handle through. Um, you have to ream those out with a drill bit or something in order to make them the right size. So make sure you do that, otherwise you definitely won't get the handle through and you'll have troubles. Ask me how I know. Okay, so let's go ahead and attempt to put this whole thing together. Starting with this little base right here and then you have uh, this guy. Basically, just fold it in half. And see how it stays slightly open just put a pinch of ca glue right in there and then hold it together uh, until you get what you want i just grab it like this with my tweezers and then dip this end in some ca glue 
like that. There's a little dab on there and then pinch it together tight. Wipe off that excess and let it set up. Now that it's flipped over, I'll glue it down into the middle right here and try and get it straight up and down if you can. See how there's kind of an excess of CA glue there? That's actually okay because, because of things. All right, so for this piece, uh, I think it's best to start on this side, bending it at a 90 and leaving it like so because that little T piece that we just made, it's, it's easier to set it in here. The, up, the T goes right side up basically. The top of the T goes here and then the vertical part goes right there. That's easier to do now uh, while it's in two halves like this. And you can kind of see how everything sits in there. We'll try and do this on camera. Okay, I've taped it down to try and hold it in place. Whoop. This is tricky to do. I've got a camera stand right in my way. All right, let's see if we can make this work here. So what's really hard is the T at the bottom, it can't set up right away. It's got to go in the center. It's really easy to drop it on there. It doesn't end up in the right place though. Oh, there we go. We're in the middle. All right. Hopefully that makes sense that this is all centered up now. And then I'm gonna put a dot of CA glue, kind of heavy handed right here on the back top. You're never gonna see any of this so that that stays in place. Now, very carefully bend that in half alright so then you uh, bend it in half again together so you've got this evenly divided section uh, right there in the middle because those spools go on either side of that This is a very nice little detail. It's supposed to fold over and be kind of like at a 45 degree angle. Um, it, there's not quite enough relief on the PE to get that on there. So I wouldn't, if these even broke off, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. Because you're never going to really notice it when you're done. This side actually might go all the way down. Anyway. That's what you're looking to get to. We'll straighten this back out. That's that's the part thus far. Now it gets tricky because what you're supposed to do is slide one of these wheels in here. All right, like that and then stick, so you can see what it looks like, then stick one of the handles through this thing. All right, I just put a touch of glue in there so that we can get the gear mechanism in place. I'm not concerned about it floating in the middle between the two things and pivoting on the handles, that'll That'll work just fine, given the tininess of this whole thing. All right, and then here's the handle. It's got a little bit of CA glue on it. There we go. They want you to have it at like that angle right there. Again, if you have 
trouble with this, just just move on. Let it go. It's this is going to be so little and hard to notice on the build that's not worth fussing over. And then we got to get the other one installed. All right, I'll do that. Okay, uh, I forgot there's one other critical component to this. There's this little box that you have to fold. And as far as I could tell, this would be where um, they feed out the line to the sound, up to the sounding bar, down to their weight to determine the depth of the water. And this thing is just a matter of a few folds so just I just do these side ones first and I don't really fuss with any glue on this thing because it's so little and you're done and that slot faces out, that's where the uh, line would feed out of. All right, this is generic. It's just kind of got a fit here like this. Goes to the bottom. I'm just, I'm just sticking it on there with some CA glue and I'm gonna let it dry. I'm not gonna fuss about it being too straight or not. Uh, that'll work. And we'll let that set up for a second. All right, last order of business is attaching the sounding machines dial it sits right on top there it is here's your piece I'm gonna paint this uh, NATO black and then I'll put a little white area in on top of the dial alright press on okay so we have our lifeboat we have our sounding machine uh, now you need a sound bar the sounding bar is what swings out uh, from the ship and allows you to lower down your little uh, weight to measure the depth. And so these are the photo etch parts. This is something I would consider an optional part and not something you should sweat um, installing. Maybe uh, this is the plate that attaches to the side of the ship. This plate goes onto that. You could You could mount that up and then maybe just Take the, the arm itself and just glue it into position if you wanted to. Um, the rest of this is, is very difficult. These four tiny little pieces right here, you actually get like 16 of them or 20 of them from KA to install in case you lose them. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and see if I can't uh, show you how to install all this. All right, the first thing we're going to do is pretty easy. It's, it's just basically kind of a warm-up. Uh, you're going to take this little guy bend two 90s in it and attach it to this plate right here. Um, this gets installed onto the hull of the ship. I'm going to just glue this on like so. <clears throat> Let that set up. Uh, so this is going to hold, this is basically the pivot point for the sounding arm. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. You can go ahead and pre-paint it right now if you want to, and then we'll glue it on, uh, whatever you prefer to do. Press it on. Okay, so uh, I forgot to display this tiny little piece. This is L22 in the intro, but this is your uh, bar, and what you should do is bend this thing and wrap it around the narrow little end, and it's kind of the clamp that holds the whole thing to the hull. Uh, you want to start here. And the reason that I say that is, is it determines the orientation of all the rest of your parts, basically. Um, so this is going to be facing out at you, at a, you know, the flat side, like this is clamped to the hull. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. Let me put, I'm going to put a dab of glue on the end of this. And we'll put it like that. So now that we've got this flat surface this is going to be out and you need to reference that for all the crap that we're going to put on over here at this end if you want it to display right uh, this basically is the face that will be facing you and everything needs to be kind of in reference to that proceeding forward because the next thing we're going to do is fold up and put on 
this little dial and you, it goes on the larger part of that bump right there and it's it needs to be facing out towards you uh yeah I'll, i think that makes sense right so we'll bend this up okay so we'll take this guy and just slide it on here And I'm going to pinch these back together a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now, see how this is my flat face? And I slide over here. I need to glue this so that that face is up like that. Otherwise, you'll lose your reference. So I'm just going to put a little CA glue on here. Turn it up like that, and we're good to go. And I'll put a little more glue right here. And this is the back side that's going to be up against the hull, so feel free to put a little bit more glue right there as well. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is take these tiny little parts and make basically a uh, four cornered deal uh, that matches this piece. So what you need to take into account is how it's going to rest on the ship. So this flat face, face will be out and then it literally lays down. You could pretend this is the edge of the deck and it sits right here. So you're going to want it to uh, have something to rest on, a positive contact point, which would be one of these things. So when you make this X, basically the way this clock faces, you're going to want one coming directly up and the other 90 being opposite of it. And then this one being up and that one being down uh, in order to have a positive glue contact point is, is what I'm getting at here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take this first piece right here and get my little guy here and my tweezers. All right, so... Here's my first piece. I'm going to put it on the top like that. There we go. You can see that piece is sticking right on the top and it's centered. So the next one needs to go opposite to it right there on the bottom. So here's the next piece. Like that. We'll put this one right here. And that's good. Here's the last one. Okay. So now, man, this is hard to get to focus nicely. Now you've got this little X on there. And this piece basically, right, just sets right on here, straight in on the end. So I'll put a little dollop of CA glue on the end here. So now this piece will be able to rest on this basically the five o'clock position on the edge of the hull of the ship okay all right and that's it that's the sounding bar all assembled uh, the next thing you need to do is just paint it up so we can install everything so let's do that press it on okay it's time to put start putting things together so we'll start off with putting our sounding machine right about here And that's because the pivot point is going to be right here. So this thing would swing out right here and you'd want your line running out and away from the sounding machine um, at this position. So we'll start with that. Then we'll go ahead and add this plate. All right, so this goes right here. Like so. We'll touch that up. 
Let's get rid of the excess CA glue. Like so. Okay, apparently I wasn't recording when I set the sounding bar on. I apologize, but it just sits here and then uh, sits on this spot right over here. And I'm going to let this dry for a second, and I'll go ahead and add just a touch of uh, CA glue again to reinforce this. And then we can move on to the main part, which is going to be installing our 25-foot cutter right there. All right, so that's the installation of our sounding machine and sounding bar for sounding. All right, now it's time to start doing the tricky stuff. So here's our 25-foot boat, and you can see I threw uh, the oars inside. I left the tips brass because I'd read that they had brass tips. All right, so on the end here, we have our little hooks that we previously installed. And here we have, I already pre-folded the um, rigging. So what we're going to do is these are split i'm going to split this open and we're going to literally install the uh, split this apart we're going to put this on that loop i'm going to try and do this on the camera here and pinch it together we want the boat to naturally hang from the rigging here until we can get things lined up the way that uh, we want. So that we'll put that through the loop, straighten this back out, and then I'm actually going to pinch it together a little bit. There we go. So now that one's installed and we do it again for the other one. Pinch that together and we're good to go. Uh, obviously this is photo etch and it's very important that these ropes stay straight and taut because that's what they're supposed to be doing. So now, now things get real tricky. Um, what we could pre do for hanging this thing is, is put a little twist in our, open, the, open up the hook. The idea is hopefully I can wedge this little twisty dealy into place onto the davit, have the boat hang where we want it to hang, uh, and then without it falling down and get some CA glue on it right away. So let's do that, pressing on it. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this here uh, <laughs> on camera, and it's, it's, it's awkward, I guess, is the best way to put it, because we, we need it to dangle but not get screwed up right and I know my fingers are in the way but I've hooked the back side on davit and I'm just twisting my link back can you see that so it, yes the ship the boat boat is hanging there we'll adjust the rest of this on uh, when we get to it so let me try and reach around here I gotta try and do this so my finger doesn't block you completely here okay so this is gonna hang on here next let me do this off camera because this is just gonna take a bunch of time to do here and then we'll come back okay back uh, yeah I ended up sticking this on and it 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 worked right they ended up hanging and I've already put a couple dots of CA glue um, both at the top and then down here I'd like the boat to not move around. Uh, somehow these two davits are swung out just a little bit more than I would like because while realistic there's a gap between the deck and the lifeboat and I would have liked it if it was touching uh, to help glue it in a position uh, more to just to just to provide me an extra warm fuzzy about it being secured but this is gonna have to do. So the next thing I'm going to do here is just go ahead and touch up the paint, maybe do a little bit more CA glue, and then we'll start our rigging process. Pressing on. Okay, so uh, we'll see how well you can see this. I'm going to start by putting a dot of CA back on this davit. We need to begin our initial uh, rigging run right here. So we'll put that 
CA glue there. I've got a long stretch of my rigging and I'm just going to get it stuck on that dabbit right there. And then the other one is right up here, slightly out of view, but it's the same thing. And I'm, I'm literally going to pull this rigging up and over uh, the routing that it would, I guess, mostly do. We're kind of going to simulate, get this hair out of here. We're going to simulate the the rigging that runs the davits and then the stuff that's secured to the lifeboat this is based off of my reference photo the one that i have of titanic so we'll let that sit and uh, i'm just going to give this a few moments to really set up and then we'll come back and run it the rest of the route that's why it's just dangling off the side so be right back in a moment Okay, so now we're going to make our initial run. Uh, what I'm going to do is put a dot of CA on the back side of the pulley. And then I'm going to put a dot of CA over the top of the davit here where I want the string to come over. And I found that kind of incrementally doing this works out best. So I'm going to come right over that davit, put a little bit of tension, or I'm sorry, over the pulley. A little bit of tension and then right up over onto the davit with just a little bit of tension. Bring the line down because it's going to go down and make sure the CA grabs, which is what's happened there. And then we'll do it again over here. We'll put dab of CA and then another little patch right over the top here because there's, there's a few turns that have to take place. So over the pulley. A little bit of tension over the top of the davit and down because it's going to go down and make sure the CA glue, glue grabs and I'm going to let it set up again. So this, uh, in the reference photos I have, the grab line that you see up here, right, going across has been removed. I didn't see it going across in this kind of semi-deployed position. Definitely see lines going from the pulleys up to the top of the davit. And then there is some lines that I'm not sure if they run down to the boat or what, but they go down. We're going to use these same ones to do our kind of crisscross pattern here, which I'll show you next. I'll reposition the camera while this glue sets up. Okay, so now you got to kind of do some thinking here. I pick a, the same reference point. I go to the second uh, dot right there on the grab rope. And I put a dot of CA glue, and I'm going to bring my line down kind of taut, and I'm going to hit that point right there. That's going to be my, my glue point right there. And you kind of got to hold the line in a little bit. And this is tough because the boat has this gap back here, uh, so I can't put too much tension on the line here. But what we're going to do... Let's repeat it over here. Is we're going to do this kind of secured crossing line. Add a little bit of excess CA up in here. This rigging line that holds this boat kind of in position. This is based off of my reference photos. Um, these these lines are going to crisscross, and they actually go get secured underneath inside of here somewhere. Uh, all that detail is not clear, so I'm going to take a little bit of license here to um, decide where everything's going to go. All right, so prepping for that, I'm going to take this one that's on our left, and I'm going to go through this window. I'm going to reach inside here, and I'm going to pull it out. And I want put just a little bit of tension on it and have it be secured up in that corner right there. So I'll put a dot of CA glue in this corner. We'll put a little tension on our line and let it set up just like that. All right, then I'll reach in here with my scissors, snip that excess off, and we're gonna repeat the same process with this line and we're gonna go the opposite direction, right? Okay, so stick it in through the window, grab it over here, 
pull it through. So now we've got our little crossing. I, I kind of would have liked it if the crossing ha had happened higher up, but this is how the reference photo showed, that I had showed the, uh, showed where everything went. All right, so again, a little bit of CA glue in the corner. Grab our line. Just like that. And that's it. That's going to hold it. So we'll reach in here now. Set that out of place. Okay. That is our 25 foot cutter out and ready to go. Right next to it, we have our sounding bar. Um, Titanic had a picture of it rigged, ready to go with a line attached here and it kind of drooped up and went up in this direction. Um, but my client, I'm gonna forego that because I think two things. My client is one, kind of doing like an Admiralty style model, like, you know, this is ready to go. And two, I think that will gaudy up these lines and the white lines. Like, why is there why is there some sloppiness with the rigging happening right here? Uh, versus this is kind of all clean and makes sense. I'm going to leave that. Uh, he's going to watch this video and see this. And if he wants to uh, monkey with that and have me add that line in there, he'll, he'll send me a message to let me know. But otherwise, I think it looks good. So all you have to do is repeat all that for the other side, which I've done. And I had good luck with the boat on the other side actually touching the hull. Um, so, yeah, let me take the camera off. We'll take a quick look at all that. Okay, here we are over on the starboard side where I've done basically the same thing as over on the port side. Uh, the difference here being, as previously mentioned, that I was able to touch the hull with the boat. That's just the way that the angle worked out, so I got a much better positive contact point. You shouldn't be worried about this. I'm only worried about this because I have to ship it. And I want it to to hold up, right? So, and here we are. Other side, you can see the slight gap. Go over to the top, there's the space. That actually looks better, right? I mean, uh, and I've glued everything. It should hold up okay. And I, the thread actually is probably going to provide us with a real uh, positive connection point to support the whole thing and help it work out. So, yeah, looks good. So if we move along here, there's our sounding bar. This is the other main lifeboats installed. And then this is where they're supposed to be the rest of the lifeboats that I am super grateful as far as this model goes were not provided. Uh, and then obviously uh, it would have been great if they were provided when the ship was sunk because then there would have been enough room for everyone. Just one of the unfortunate realities of things. So that's what that big gap is right there. We'll take another look over here at the uh, starboard side. Again, 25 foot cutter and then right away onto our 30 foot boats and then these are the uh, collapsible boats up there installed. It's all from the KA kit, sounding bars installed over here, sounding machine over there. So you can hear sounds, right? All right, and then these are all installed nicely. Again, our big gap. And here are the other boats. And when you, you know, when you go to fun angles and stuff, um, you just see a ton of rigging. And it just looks, it looks really cool, right? All right, so that concludes, fortunately, the lifeboats. It's time to move on to other fun things for assembly here. Uh, you can see the front of the ship. 
they look good sticking out on the side right there starboard moving over here to port it's just neat right okay uh, next I gotta make some decisions I I, I would like to so up here in the bow, I think we can go ahead. Maybe I'll do that next. We can get these cranes installed uh, and any last little details that might be down in here. Um, I've got those ladders in. So then the other ladders, which are more like stairs, can be installed. We might, we might work on the forward uh, cargo bay here. On the back of the ship, running all the way back down here. Here we've got, let's see, a couple cranes that go here and there, right? Um, and then the cranes down there, and then we have our mast. So again, with my whole little rule of I don't want to put my fingers, I want things done and moving out. I thought the mast could go in right away. Uh, up on the bow they can, but really here I think we can we could put these cranes in not these cranes and then the mast right on the bow it would be every little detail the crane stuff that's left in here then I'll put this mast in so I think we'll do that next I think we'll work on the cranes and everything for the bow get this detail forward well deck finished up and then for funsies because it's probably the exact same thing we'll whip up these cranes and then I'll have an episode devoted to the uh, mass I think that's where we're at. This is an incredibly sharp, handsome looking ship. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it is turning out and its lines. I hope that uh, my customer is too. Well, I know he is. He's been very vocal about that. But here's the ship with all of its lifeboats installed, and we've just got some great detail coming along. All right, that's it for now. I hope you've all enjoyed this. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.